25 years of media excellence. Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. This bulletin is coming to you live from the Joy 99.7 FM studios here in Kokomlimle, a digital address GA0993341, also live on Love 99.5 FM in Kumase, affiliates across the country, including ATL FM in Cape Coast, Kekeli Radio in Ho, it's on ABN Radio in London, and around the world at myjoyonline.com. The news is brought to you by UMB Bank, UMB Speed Up, Digibank, Let's Go, and Telesol 4G, just a touch. In this edition, police in the Volta region launch manhunt for killers of an assembly member for so Gakofa, whose wife and daughter were in critical, are in critical condition as angry residents issue three-day ultimatum to them to apprehend the robbers. The perpetrators of this crime should be found and brought to book. Else, we have decided to vent our spleen and anger on the whole nation by blocking this Sogakofa bridge. We'll hear from Sister of the Deceased as well as the police. The police administration worried about growing public impunity following separate attacks on their personnel in the Greater Accra, Eastern and Volta regions in the last week. The truck, truck driver puts reverse and he hit him there and he pulled him from here out. Every part of his body, the head, even the ear is, is, is very serious. Human rights campaigners advocate more government funding for Shraj as Joy News Hotline documentary exposes the degrading lives of children living in servitude in witches camps in northern Ghana. I don't know anything about witchcraft. I do not even understand what witches do. That's coming up shortly in sports. And the Black Bombers are back from Dakar, Senegal, where two boxers have secured qualification for the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo. And later, Clash of the Ghanaian Musical Titans, latest releases by rap icon Sarkodie and controversial dancehall artist Shatawale has many talking. The cash, the match, the car. Do you not get some? My three Range Rovers. Do you not get some? It's something you have to get and you have to get What else? And my home has told me to go find you. If you get it for you, you can't say. When you find time, you won't be a team one. Well, I'll tell you about the two songs, Ahum Brassier and Little Tip, that's got people talking on social media. You want to stay for that? All that and more on the Midday News with me, MFA Apau. And our very first story, angry residents of Sogakofa have issued a three-day ultimatum to police to apprehend a group of robbers who shot and killed assembly member for the area, leaving his wife and daughter in critical condition. Marcus Mauto Azakli was attacked by armed men who made away with an unspecified sum of money. The news of the killing sparked spontaneous protests with residents mounting roadblocks and impeding traffic flow for more than two hours. There's more in this report. Sister of a murdered assembly member for the Sugakofa South Assembly, Salom Ajahli, narrating what she saw Sunday during the attack by the robbers. Information gathered by Joy News indicates the assailants broke into the home of a deceased and attempted making away with his safe. In the scaffold, Mr. Ajahli, who was elected assembly member in December 2019, sustained multiple gunshot wounds to his chest, stomach and head leading to his death. The wife and the daughter of a late assembly member are said to have been severely injured during the attack. We sent the wife to the hospital. The small girl, we see her back here, blood and the ear too, there's blood. So when we sent her to the injury, they said there's three bullets in her body. How about the wife? What happened to the wife? The wife, when she came back with the blood, the distance is blood. So I see her here. Mm -hmm. I don't know how big the wound is. But all the body is News of a killing sparked spontaneous protests in the area with residents pouring onto the streets and others besieging the police station over the matter. For several hours, the main Sugakofa road was blocked to traffic by the residents who accused the police of not doing enough when the alarm was raised. But first, when the thing happened, if they like, they brought their standing, whatever they call it, they come around, crap, they didn't come in the scene. They will run away. They will, they will not kill him. Like, look at how that door is. Before they break it, it's less than 15 to 20 minutes, they are breaking that door. If police people to be around, Doing that thing, I don't think they can kill him. Marto is not a, a deaf and dumb that we know. He shouts with some. Wait, oh. oh. At a press conference, the residents issued a three-day ultimatum to the police to have the perpetrators arrested or face their wrath. 
Maxwell Lukuto is an opinion leader. The police should find the killers within three working days. The perpetrators of this crime should be found and brought to book. Else, we have decided to vent our spleen and anger on the whole nation by blocking this Sogakope bridge. This is our way of recording our displeasure towards what has been happening in the community. For the immediate family of the deceased, it is a case of a breadwinner lost, the father of a little daughter below five gone, and a grieving wife in hospital hoping to recover to hold the fort while the killers of her husband continue to remain on the loose. Meanwhile, police in the area say they are on a hand for the perpetrators. They are, however, cautioning the residents against offering ultimatums. PRO for the Volta Region Police, Corporal Prince Dogbache, tells Joy News they are keeping the investigations open. We do not have any one arrested in connection with uh, this crime as yet, but uh, we are working closely with uh, those that are very critically involved, particularly the wife of uh, the deceased. Uh, as we speak, she is currently receiving and uh, we are monitoring situations in order to continue with our efforts in trying to unravel uh, the mystery behind this uh, dastardly act. Well, there you had uh, the Volta Region Police uh, PR, or Corporal Prince Dogbache there. He also says that the residents acted unlawfully when they blocked roads and obstructed free movement of motorists for several hours. You're still listening to the Midday News here on Joy 99.7 FM. And speaking of impunity, in the last week alone, police personnel in some parts of the country have come under attack from commercial drivers and members of the public who appear to take the law into their own hands. In at least three separate incidences, police personnel have been knocked over or attacked with machetes by members of the public, sparking concern by the police hierarchy. I will speak uh, to the police shortly, but first, head of Joy News' security desk, Gifty Andropia, uh, joins me quickly with some details on these incidents. Gifty, let's begin with the incident involving the torture driver and a police officer who met his death last Friday. Tell us what happened. Well, let me say, according to the police, the incident happened around the um, UPSA Medina area, uh, Trinity Theological Seminary, and we're told that uh, the policeman in question, um, Sergeant okay. Moses up here, attempted to uh, stop a trotro driver for some road traffic uh, infractions. They said that he has solicited passengers, stopped illegally, and so they tried to apprehend him. But then the driver ran over the police, and he dragged him a few uh, meters, killing him instantly. Um, Latif Idrisu has been speaking with some eyewitnesses um, who have been narrating the ordeal that the late uh, police officer went through. He crossed the car, the throttle driver here, and the driver, uh, the one who just passed away, he got down. So he was trying to open the, the front door. And quickly, uh, the throttle driver put reverse. So when, when he, he moved, Reverse. Yeah. The the officer came in front of yeah. the the vehicle. Yeah. And from that place, he just hit, and the car is the under is very down. So he hit him there, and he pulled him from here. So, out. so this is blood. Yes. So it ended right here. So this blood we suspect yeah. came from late Sergeant Moses up here. Uh, exactly. So the injury is Moses very was it to his head, every part of his body, the head, the uh, excuse me to say the bottom, because. You can see he's, he was pulling him on the floor. Even the ear is, is, is very serious. Well, Gifty, we also understand the driver is still on the run, but what information have you picked from the police on this particular matter? Well, MFA, uh, the, our, our sources within the police tell us that uh, they, are, they are yet to apprehend the particular driver, but then the owner of the vehicle uh, turned himself in at the police station and has been assisting with investigations. We also know, according to the police, that the conductor uh, on that particular bus has been arrested. Mm. Gifty, stay with me, but let's uh, get on the phone lines and speak to the Eastern Region Police uh, PR Ebene. We know that um, there's a video of a policeman who was knocked off his feet by a taxi driver, landing him off the bonnet. That video has gone viral. We understand the taxi driver has been apprehended and is being put before court. We're grateful for your time on the Midday News. Mr. Beniza Tete, briefly explain to us how this incident actually happened. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Um, on the 21st of February, the same driver was spotted obstructing road traffic, and also picking passengers up on authorized places within the Kofudia municipality. So there were traffic officers on duty on that day. They signaling to park 
off the road to enable them uh, um, escorting to the regional MTTB for him to be posted because what he was doing was against the law. He refused to pack and in the process sped off and got one of the traffic officers injured. He actually used the car to uh, hit him on one of the legs. So uh, on the 28th, the officers spotted the car in traffic at the Galloway traffic light. So there were three officers on duty, and the sergeant who was in charge of the three officers instructed the corporal to uh, go sit in the vehicle to accompany him to the resident DTB for him to be processed for the earlier offense of uh, obstructing road traffic offense and also parking at an authorized place. He, in the process, used the, uh, he used the internal lock to lock the vehicle. That made it impossible for the police officers to, to sit in the vehicle. So the officers then started directing other uh, you know, cars so that they will let him pack off the road because in the process it was creating traffic jam. So he saw that there was uh, some leeway for him. So he reversed quickly and sped up towards the direction of the sergeant who was by then okay. uh, directing his other colleagues. So in the process, that the sergeant had no option than to jump to safety hmm. and in the process held the bonus of the taxi cab. He drove him to a distance of about 400 meters. So there was a driver of a Nissan Urban bus who saw the whole uh, thing unfold. So in the process, he used his vehicle to cross him, and that made him to stop. Okay. And uh, subsequently, he was arrested. As we speak now, we have charged him with uh, uh, dangerous driving, contrary to section one of the road traffic act and resisting arrest, uh, contrary to section 226 of the Criminal Offences Act. The earlier offence of obstructing uh, road traffic and parking at an authorised place, it will be dealt with on that score also at the appropriate time. Okay. We, we, we are taking this action to serve as a strong warning and a, and a deterrent to errant and recalcitrant drivers who want to do whatever they like, especially on our road. Definitely. This is coming, this is coming just some few days after a similar incident in Medina where a policeman lost his life tragically. So we will stop at nothing to let the law take its course and we will ensure that it's punished so that it will serve as a deterrent to other errant and recalcitrant drivers uh, in the region. Of course, punished according to the law. That's the Eastern Regional Police VRA, Beniza Teche, to the Volta region now, where some angry residents of Kalakpa charged on police personnel and officers from the Forestry Commission after the arrested persons who were illegally felling Rose Road. And Gifty Andra Pia is still with me in the studio. What do we know about this, Gifty? And my father, the details uh, we have gathered is that this incident happened last Wednesday and the police and forestry guards personnel distormed the area to uh, effect the arrest of the illegal loggers who were in the Kalakpa uh, Forest Reserve. We're told that the mob also released two arrested illegal loggers who were handcuffed by the police and reportedly inflicted machete wounds on two police officers, leaving them with severe injuries. And then we also understand that the Volta Regional Police uh, is investigating uh, the matter. MFA. Well, I'll give to you under your eyes, head of our security desk. Thank you very much. We have the Director General of Public Affairs for the Ghana Police Service, Sheila Baye Bakman. We're grateful for your time here on the Midday News. Quite a number of incidents um, attacking police personnel. We've had separate incidents. We've gone to the Greater Okra region, Eastern and Novota regions. How are you receiving this, and what exactly is the police administration doing about it? Erica, thank you. Um, we want the public to know that this impunity against police officers will not be countenanced. And that if the police cannot protect ourselves, then we cannot do our work then we would have failed in doing our work. So whatever legal means possible that we, we will take to protect ourselves as police officers, we will do that. Any person who touches a police officer should know that he or she will not go scot-free and that he would be arrested to face the law. Right now, you know that that gentleman, Osei Bonsu, the driver of the Ford Transit bus, 
who ran over a police officer around Medina, is on the run. We have published these pictures widely, and Joy, you have already made the announcement several times. He will be arrested, and anybody else who touches a police officer should know that he or she will not go scot-free. He will definitely be arrested wherever they find themselves to face the consequence of the law. Well, but issues about uh, police morale being affected as a result of these incidents, what can you say about that? Sometimes it is perhaps one or two standard operating procedures that the police officers may not have followed rightly. That is why we continue to train and retrain ourselves. But there is no justification for harming a police officer in any manner, let alone to kill a police officer. So that even if the police officer fails to follow any procedure, the person would take it as an advantage or opportunity to harm the police officer. So training and retraining of our officers is one of the things we do. And then we encourage ourselves because their their job is is a high-risk job and it's a difficult one. And if we're doing it and other citizens that we expect support from will not rather support us but would harm us, and if you know this will be terrible. And so we are even grateful that Joy, for instance, keeps hammering on this so that people would know the right thing to do and not harm police officers. So for the police administration, it's a matter of importance to the police administration. It's a matter of importance to the Inspector General of Police. That is when, whenever a police officer is harmed or touched in any way, apart from taking steps to see if the person has to go under medication, to see to it that the person goes through, if it is death and we have to console the bereaved, we do that. We also try to seek justice for whoever has um, been harmed. Okay. We're grateful for your time. That's the Director General of Public Affairs for the Ghana Police Service, mm-hmm. Sheila Abeye Buckman. You're still listening to the Midday News. You're on Joy 99.7 FM, brought to you by UMB Bank, UMB Speed Up, and then also Telesol 4G, just a touch. Now, Joy News' latest hotline documentary, Seven the Witches, has revealed the story of children condemned to a life of servitude and bondage in Ghana's witches camps. The full version of the documentary airs tonight on Joy News on TV and online on my Joy Online.com. But here is the teaser to the documentary ahead of its premiering. Manja, been for a lambo on a cambray, that would be tant and I have any. I don't know anything about witchcraft. I do not even understand what witches do. When I was coming here, people kept saying the woman I am going to live with is a witch. They said when I come live with her, I would die. A so-called deity here that could cleanse people of witchcraft became a safe haven for women who came from far and near to seek help after their communities banished them. One of them is Bakpo Tig, who lives here with her grandson, Blasiem Jepora. Tig's story of how she came here is similar to that of many of the women here. She refused to attend the funeral of a family member who had died. That singular act was enough to earn her a witchcraft tag. She was beaten, nearly killed and fearing for her life. She fled her village and came here. They beat me mercilessly when I was accused. They chased me out. My children brought me here. And since I came here, I've made this place my home. The first time I came here, I saw only women here. We are the only children. I keep asking myself, My grandmom is old, and I am also too young. What can we do? People say my grandmother is a witch, that she is going to kill me. Except on that documentary coming up tonight, Serving the Witches, is our Joy News latest hotline documentary we'll be airing tonight on TV and also on myjoyonline.com. Meanwhile, human rights campaigners say government has failed in its responsibility to safeguard the rights of the inmates of these camps with an almost non-existent budget for organizations like the Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice Shraj. Lamnatu Adam is a Tamale-based rights activist. She spoke with Daniel Dati on the Super Morning Show today.
the mandated government institution is shrouded because this is a clear human rights issue. So for me, I think that if Shwaj is well resourced and takes it up, they'll be able to do more. We are in a committee with some few government institutions. Uh, we have the Shwaj in the committee. We have uh, DOFSU in the committee. And we have the Department of Gender in the committee. But I can tell you that they don't have budget to do the work. And so for real commitment to be said to have happened, it has it must have budgetary implications so that we're able to respond to some of the things we say we want to do. Lamna to Adam there. Let's quickly head to the La General Hospital where shutdown procedures have been set in motion for a redevelopment of the facility, which is expected to cost about $52 million. Joining us to visit so workers move around documents, equipment, among others, as they prepare to make way for the reconstruction next month. Joining us is Mamiesi Thompson, joins us live from the facility with more. Mamiesi, what more have you gathered about the closure? Thank you very much, MFR. So what many have been asking is the impact that closure is going to make on healthcare delivery for residents in and around the area. And we are learning that the hospital administration is, has made preparations for those people. They are going to work with other facilities to transfer, to transfer patients and other um, um, clients to them. In the meantime, um, construction is going to start from next month and it's going to cost $52 million. Meanwhile, the assembly to um, La Dade Cotopan Assembly is also making measurement, it's also put in place measures to help residents in the area and other cases and take care of other cases while the shutdown will go on for two years. That's my colleague, Mamie C. Thompson, from the La General Hospital. Our top stories in this edition. Police in the Volta region launch manhunt for killers of an assembly member for Sugakofa, whose wife and daughter are in critical condition as angry residents issue three-day ultimatum to them to apprehend the robber. Still to come, clash of the Ghanaian musical titans, latest releases by rap icon Sarkodie and controversial dancehall artist Chatawale has many talking. The cash, the bunch, the car. You don't get some. My three range rover. You don't get some. It's something you have to get the other. You become a corner. What else? And my home has told me to go find you. If you get the poor, you get kind of sex. When you find Sally, you only have to be more. was established in 1972 as the premier bank for the corporate and private sector in Ghana. From our very beginning, as the only Ghanaian bank serving all categories of businesses, we set a standard for excellence and innovation over the past 45 years. We've built a financially healthy and strong bank, demonstrated our commitment to our customers and to growing businesses, and exhibited originality and innovation at every turn. At UMB, our focus is built around people, service, products, and technology. These are the key to our present success and our future triumphs. At UMB, we are poised to make a difference not only with our customers, but also in the banking industry. We invite you to share in our future. Our future starts now with you. Good things come in two, Sampa. New New Year Chamber, Kwate. And Nunti, from the second month of the year, for two months, DSTV is giving you two months DSTV access subscription instead of one when you buy a DSTV Zapper. Nothing so. Yes, step you up more than last month. Just pay for a higher package and DSTV will step you up to the one above that from 40 Ghana cities all month long. Menje SMS DSTV to 1731 and we will call you back or call 0302 740 5 Zero. DSTV. Feel every moment. Thanks for staying with us here on the Midday News. Time now for sports. And for the latest. And the Black Bombers are back from Dakar, Senegal, <laughs> bearing goodies. The two of our boxers have secured qualification for the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo. There is more in the following report by Joy Sports editor Nathaniel Lato. 
The captain of the side, Suleiman Tete, who's a flyweight, put up an impressive display to see of Marquinho Giuliano Gento of Mozambique in the final of his division's competition. Also, Samuel Techi, a featherweight, got a good challenge from Isaac Masembe of Uganda, but emerged a winner after scoring 2-1 eventually. The likes of Jesse Latte and Shakul Samed were unable to book places at the Olympic Games. So as it stands, these two boxers will definitely answer the roll call in Tokyo, Japan. This is an improvement of one from what Ghana presented at the last Olympic Games. Boxing provided only one boxer for the Olympic Games in Brazil the last time. The team is currently looking forward to the next opportunity in France in May to ensure that many more boxers qualify for the Olympic Games. As it stands, Ghana's best record in terms of silverware at the Olympic Games lies with boxing with three medals. So Samuel Techi and Suleiman Tete are the men who have grabbed their tickets for the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. That's your sport. Thank you very much, Hans. Let's head to the Sinai West constituency where tension is rising. We are told that some delegates of the new patriotic party in the constituency of the Bono region have, have started invoking curses on party executives. Precious Semivo uh, is there for us and joins us. So what is the reason for the invocation of these curses? Well, I'm a, some, some of the delegates are alleging and claiming that uh, they've heard that their favorite aspirant, uh, Bernard Odo Techi, uh, will be you know, disqualified after the vetting which took place on Friday. And that appears not to have gone down well uh, with them, although the party is yet to officially release the outcome uh, of the vetting. But some of the delegates are saying that they are not ready to wait uh, until the communique comes from the party. So they are invoking the cases to affect anyone who may have played a role. Uh, that is, if eventually Bernard Odotechi is, uh, you know, out of the uh, race. Bernard is contesting the incumbent Sunyani West MP, Ignatius uh, Bafo Ewa, in the Sunyani West uh, constituency. And this happened today uh, at Tra Cemetery in the Sunyani West uh, constituency. And we are waiting for officials to release the outcome of the vetting, probably tomorrow or thereabout. But obviously, those delegates are not happy should their aspirant, Bernard Rodotechi, uh, does not qualify. That's my colleague, Precious Semevo. Interesting times ahead of the NPP parliamentary primaries. But throughout this month, Joy FM and the Multimedia Group will be bringing you stories on the country's rich culture through food, music, language, clothing, and identity from all 16 regions in celebration of Ghana Month. Today, I will take you to the northern region for some history lessons on how three tribes, the Dagombas, Mampusis, and Nanumbas, settled there. Our lecturer is Dr. Joseph Kachi with the University of Cape Coast History Department. The Dogumba have a very good story of where they came from because they have preserved it for over 500 years. They say they came from a place in eastern Nigeria where they were led by their great hunter Tawaji into these areas. And when they entered northern Ghana, they were led by Bewa and maybe he might have conquered some indigenous people and ruled over them. And there was a succession dispute among his children. And so they fought among themselves and dispersed. And then these children were Situbo, Mantambu, and Tohugu. And each of them founded his own state. And that is how come we have the Nanumba, the Mampusi, and the Dagumba. All different states, but very closely related. It is related that the Mampusi were the eldest and after this day, the, the Gomba and Anumba still recognize them as the elders. That's Dr. Joseph Kachi with the University of Cape Coast History Department. Remember to stay tuned in for the Conquer Ghana Tour. The Adum Brands will also bring you the Fufu Party. Joy Prime will lead the Made in Ghana Fair. Joy News, of course, will bring you insightful features. Asempa FM will be the hub for your indigenous current affairs news and information. Whilst Hits FM will wow you with real Ghanaian entertainment. Not forgetting Love FM and Ishira FM. Now, between the 27th and the 29th of March, you will be hosted at the Aviation Social Center to rep your regions. It's Ghana Month on Joy. Joyfully Ghanaian. And the last 48 hours have seen dance at Shatawale, take on rapper Sarkodie on Twitter, calling him poor and daring him to show evidence of his wealth if he disagrees. Shatawale released the song Little Tip, hitting at Sarkodie. Sarkodie did not comment or react like mature people do. He's, however, released a song this morning titled Aho Brassier that has got people talking on social media. Listen to the song by Shatawale and that of Sarkodie. 
the cash, the mash, the car. You not get some. My three range rover. You not get some. My gold chain for my neck. You not get some. My Rolex diamond ring. You not get some. It sounds like you're saying you're dying, you're being too much on them. What else? Am I home? I saw me too much crying. What you can't, what you can't, you'll be a donor. And so without we don't know what they need to find. Would you find a thing if I would go my room here? Now what you need to be with us here and you find a good farm. Humility is key, and now Brasier is trending number one on Twitter. And that's it for the midday news here on Joy 99.7 FM. I am MFAPO. This morning is when you log on to my joyonline.com. Dr. Mensa Otabil and Ahobrasier man gives you living words.